All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I'm continuing on with my array discussion with information taken from javascript.io, javascript.info, I should say. The next thing that gets discussed in here is they start talking about some data structures. Now, this is the way I explain data structures. You might like the analogy, you might not, and it's a little dated because I'm old, all right? Uh, back in the day when I was a kid, and I think they still make them, you could buy, in fact, let's check, let's check. When I was a little kid, you could get what are called Tinker Toys. All right, and here is an example of what they look like. And it didn't look like much. They were a bunch of colored sticks. And then a bunch, now they're square, but in the past, I think they were all round. Uh, little things where you could put the sticks together. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, until we got to arrays, everything we talked about what are re are uh, what are referred to as scalar values, and a scalar value, or a scalar variable, I should say, is something that can only take one value at a time. So if I say int age equal ten, and then a little later on in my program I say age equal twenty six that value 10 is gone. It's been replaced with 26. Well, then we talked about arrays, and we mentioned how and we're getting into that again in this chapter. But arrays are like data structures. So the difference with what we've talked about previously, non-arrays, those are known as elementary data items or scalar data items because they can only hold a single value. All right? And a data structure is when you put a bunch of elementary data items together. And that's kind of the tie-in here. So imagine that instead of me teaching at Rankin where my classes are typically somewhere between 10 and 25 people, let's assume I was teaching at a university and I had 500 people in the class. It's the first day of class and I walk in right as class starts and I walk in with a bunch of graduate assistants and I say, okay, everybody here, just so you know, I've got to go back to my office for about a half an hour, and uh, then we'll start up class. But so you can entertain yourself, we're going to give you some Tinker Toys. And we give a bunch of the people these sticks, and we give a bunch of the people these circles here, and a bunch of these people these squares right here. All right? Well, again, what does this have to do with anything? So I leave, and pretty soon the graduate assistants leave too. And, you know, the people with the sticks maybe bend the sticks, maybe roll them around, etc., and so do the other people. But then somebody gets the wise idea. You know, we can, we can take and we can put together a bunch of our sticks with a bunch of these circle things and square things. Well, the individual components that you have that you put together, those are scalar values. Those are basically simple variables. Once you put them together so that you make something you know, a, a whole out of a lot of parts, for lack of better words, now you're creating what's called a data structure. The reason I'm bringing this up is the thing they talk about <clears throat> in the next part of this writing is a queue. And you may or may not be familiar with what a queue is, but even if you think you are not familiar with it, you are. Imagine that you go to the movies. You get in and the movie's 10 minutes away from starting. So you go in, you pay for your movie, and you decide that you want to go get a popcorn and a soda. So you go in line. And when you're in line, you realize there's five people in front of you and only one person waiting on those five people. All right? So what happens? The, the first person in line is the first person to be served. And the last person in line will be the last person served. So a queue is what's referred to as a FIFO structure, F-I-F-O, which means first in, first out. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Well, as it says there, when you use a queue, typically you push things to the end of it. This would be like a person walking up and adding themselves to the line. Shift, on the other hand, this would be like the next person being served. So they'd be served, you'd shift them out of here, and you'd push, and the next person then would be served. All right? 
Well, as mentioned, both push and shift are array operations, and they're both supported by JavaScript. All right, so it says here, in practice, we meet it very often. A queue of messages, and it gives some other examples. It's not that important. All right? All right. Let's, let's talk about that as opposed to another type of data structure that's a stack. All right? The example that I give is not the same one that will be given here. But the way I look at a stack is we've all done this, I think, at one time or another where you've gone into a cafeteria. It could be a school cafeteria. It could be a work cafeteria, etc. And there are no trays. And the cafeteria person, all right, the cafeteria person um, all of a sudden comes with a whole bunch of trays. Let's say 50 trays. And he or she takes the takes trays and pushes them down on that kind of spring thing that grabs them, etc. Now, instead of the first one in being the first one out, you've got the last one in being the last one out. All right? So when you work with a queue, okay, it's first in, first out. When you work with a stack, it's last in, last out. So where you do a push and a shift with a queue, you do what's called a push and a pop with a queue. All right? You're always taking your elements here from the end. And again, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. All right, so when you use the pop operation, okay, as it says, when you use pop, you grab the last element of the array and you return it. So let's take a look at the example that's here. Made that kind of long, I guess. I'm sorry about that. And I'm going to start taking and commenting some of this stuff out that we've, uh, that we've created. Because otherwise, it just takes way too long when we run this. So we did add lemon onto our list. Okay, and that's all fine and dandy. And I'm going to paste this in. All right. In fact, I guess we can, it looks like we can comment out everything that we've done to uh, until the new stuff we just put in here. So we've got fruits with apple, orange, and pear. We're telling it to pop off the last element, so that should be pear. All right. And once we do that, we have changed the array. So when we do our alert again, to give us the value of what's now on the array, since we popped off the last element, all right, since we popped it off, that array should now, as it says, hold just apple and orange. Let's see if indeed that's the case. Doesn't like something. Line 43. So I must still have something that I thought I commented out that I probably did not. Yep, right there. There we go. Should be okay now. So the page says pear. That's what we popped off. And apple and orange is what's left. So again, if we want to remove something from the end of one of these data structures, we use a pop operation. That's also known as dequeuing something. Not Dairy Queen or DQ, but D-E-Q-U-E-U-E, -U -U -E, dequeuing something. If we want to add something to the end of an array, we use push. So we pop it off and we push it on. Let's just grab everything that was here and we'll move that down to here. And we'll get rid of this. There. All right, so now we've got two elements in our array. And 
we're telling it to push. In fact, let's just, so we do something different, a little different. Oops. Let's, instead of pushing a pear on there, let's push a, but oh, let's push a banana onto there. All right. And if we did it right, this should now say apple, orange, banana. All right. So let's check. there they are now what we're doing right now you might think well this is really simplistic why are you even wasting our time doing this or whatever because these are operations that you end up doing a lot on arrays all right methods that work at the beginning of the array now we'll have a shift okay so what shift is going to do is it's going to remove the first element from the array. Again, I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to keep adding to the end here. All right, so we've got this and then we're saying shift. So this, this the shift operation that's here should end up removing the first element from the array since that's apple what should be left is orange and pear all right now when we do this alert here it's letting us know what we're removing just like it did uh, here all right so let's try it again and see if indeed what gets removed is what we think is going to be removed It says apple, and now what's left is orange and pear, which is exactly what we thought would happen. We removed apple, and we're left with orange and pear. And like I said, I can't make too big a thing out of telling you this, that these are operations that get used all the time on data structures like arrays. Now that was shifting, which we removed it. And if we do an unshift, we can add it to the beginning of the array. Shouldn't be so anal about these blank spaces. I'm just gonna leave them alone. And again, as we did before, let's change this. So instead of adding apple, let's add I don't know, uh, nectarine, nectarine, I think that's spelled correctly. All right, so let's see if indeed that's now added to the beginning of our array. Nectarine, orange pear, all right. So again, we're going through some of the common operations that you tend to use a lot. You can combine these together Okay, so we've got just have apple. Then we push onto it, so onto the end. So now we have apple, orange, and peach. All right. Then we do an unshift of pineapple and lemon, which puts those at the beginning. And then we alert everything. Let's do this. Let's change it around just a tad from what they have in the book here or in our article. put this here now we're gonna we're gonna do all different things so we're going to say fruits I'm gonna see if I can come up with a bunch of different fruits figs okay and then we're going to alert fruits so what should end up printing out here is just figs that's it okay then we're going to add onto our fruit our array dates and um, cherries. And then we're going to alert fruits again. So this one should now print figs, dates, cherries. 
And we're going to add to the beginning mangoes and papayas. Oops, how I did that. Mangoes and papayas. So now when we get done, when we do that alert, we should now have mangoes, mangoes, papayas, figs, which was what we had originally, dates, and cherries. That's what should print out. So let's see if all these work. So again, this first one should just print out figs. All right. The second one should print out figs, dates, cherries. And the last one, as mentioned here, should print out all of this stuff. So let's see if indeed that works. So is the first one figs? Yes, it is. Is the next one figs, dates, and cherries? Yes, it is. Is the last one mangoes, papayas, figs, dates, cherries? Yes, it is. So that shows how you can use a combination of push, unshift, and again, we could use pop. There's a lot of ways we can do these different things. All right. Now, everything that we've been doing thus far just so you know, uh, we've been using what are called numerically indexed arrays, which means that, for example, this right here, remember, we looked at this before, that if I do this, all right, and I just, I'm going to just show you this on another screen, so to speak. If I do this right there, that's the same thing as saying, let fruits equal bracket bracket and then fruits zero equal banana and I could put that banana in double quotes or single quotes it means the same thing so this is the same as this all right it'll become a little more important a little later but it says there's a lot of ways that we can do this if we do this if we create a new array that looks like this I don't like we just looked at. And then we say this. This is not copying fruits to a new array. What it's doing is it's doing what's called a copy by reference. So now ARR and fruits both point to the same area in memory. So we can change when we get done. We can now change either ARR or fruits because it's the same thing. And that's what they talk about here. Now, that's a little confusing. And they give you some examples, and I think that that's good. So, how can you misuse an array? Okay, what you can do with an array, and this is the, the key one, I think, right here. This one. I can literally do this if I would want to. I don't know why I'd want to, but I could. So, let's, let's say we've got an array that's going to be called test scores. Okay? So I'm going to say let test scores equal bracket bracket. Okay, now I've got my first student. And I say test scores zero. So my first student equals they got 100. Now what I want to say here is my second student, so test scores one, and they got an 87. Okay, but when I'm doing this, I fat finger and I accidentally do this. Okay, that's fine. There's not an error doing that. But if we look into the memory of the computer, location zero, let's just do this. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Space them out even a little more than that. You'll see why in a second. All right, 
right, so these are our locations in memory. Okay, like kind of like our mailboxes that we talked about before. So this zeroth location has 100 in it. But we goofed up, and instead of putting the 87 here where we want it, it goes all the way down here. Okay, so what gets put into these locations? I believe what gets put in there is null, which means unknown. Now, it could be undefined, but I believe, like I said, I could be wrong there, but I'm almost positive what's going to be put in there is null. So that's what the array will look like. Not, not probably what you want, but it is what you get. The idea is with, with um, a language like JavaScript, unlike many other languages, you can change the size of the array even as the program's running. With most programming languages, you cannot do that. And that's what they talk about in here. All right. Now, notice what they say. If you use push and pop in your program, they run quickly. If you say shift and unshift, they run slower. It says, why is it faster to work with the end of the array as opposed to the beginning? Well, let's look at it this way. <clears throat> Let's suppose, as we talked about before, that I go to the movies and I go and uh, I'm in line to get, to get I, I, I walk over to the line to get a drink. You know, I want to get a soda and a popcorn. But now instead of going to the end, which would make sense and which, was mo which most of us would do, let's just say I'm totally confused. So I walk up to the first person in the front of the line and I go, is this the end of the line? And they say no. And then I walk to the next person and I say, is this the end of the line? And they say no. I walk to the next person, is this the end of the line? And they say no. I walk to the next person and they say, is this the end of the line? And they say no. Finally, I walk to the last person in line and I said, is this the end of the line? And they say yes. That's much more work than me just going to the end of the line. And that's kind of what they're talking about right here. So I'll let you read that on your own. The more elements you have in an array, the longer this kind of stuff can take. All right. So they mention that when you work with pop, it doesn't move anything because there, there isn't any rearranging that has to take place. Okay. All right. Loops work great with arrays. And I'm going to grab their example here, but I'm going to do, I'm going to change it around a little bit. There's nothing, well, let's, let's first run with their example because there's nothing wrong with it. So I've got the array and this is literally saying, I want you to cycle through the array. So start with element zero and as long as I, you know, it's less than the length. So as long as it's less than three, just give me an alert of the current element. That's all we're asking. So this should give me the, the first alert should say apple. The second alert should say orange. And the third alert should say pear, if we did it right. So let's check. Apple, orange, pear. OK. There's also another way you can do this. You can do what's called a, f a f I've heard it's called a fast for loop. Okay, in some languages, not this one, but in some languages, instead of using the of, you use the word in. So it's called a for in loop. Here they're called, it's called a for of loop. All right. And it says you can also use for in. This is the one I'm used to using. And, and I would suggest you use this one, not the other one. Well, the, the author says, don't use it. All right, I'll, I'll trust the author. But this should do the same thing. 
it's just a different kind of for loop. This should do the same thing. It's a different kind of for loop, but the author says for various reasons you shouldn't use it. That's maybe true in this in this um, language, although I don't really know why even reading that, but in other languages that's not the case. All right, we talked about the length property already. And they say that if you want to clear an array, so if you want to empty it out, you can say array, the name of the array dot length equals zero. Boom, it clears it out. There's, there's, it's got a zero length, so there's nothing in it. All right, all right, let's stop right here and we'll pick it up with this new array in our next presentation.